You know, it's Father's Day and I will try and finish on time. So you know that we're doing the second part of love this Sunday for the sermon, but I did think it was important to say something about fathers in this day and age where father, fatherhood is denigrated and the role of a father is being torn out of our society as unimportant, yet we call God Father, which shows how important it is. I am a father. I have a father. So as a father, I know what it is to love your children, which is in actual fact a reflection in the sense of how God loves his children. I also know what it's like to be exasperated by your children. I'm sure we all do. I know what it's like to be ignored by your children. I know what it's like to be hurt by your children. To feel, as you get older, neglected by your children. I also know what it's like to feel that you failed your children. I know what it's like to be proud of your children. I know what it's like to know what is best for your children but not be able to say anything. I know what it's like to be not only rejected but respected by your children. Particularly in this day and age, I also know that as a father, it's often thankless. Society has rejected you and that has come into both the world and the church. So it is thankless. And in this modern world, becoming a father is actually more difficult every day. Respect for fathers is declining. The importance of the role of a father and the responsibilities of being a father are actually actively dismissed and trying to be discarded. But in some senses, I would like to say that one of the, the overriding, overarching things in my life has been Ephesians chapter 6, verse 4, where it says, Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and the instruction of the Lord. Everything else is peripheral. And if you start from a basis of godly love, the one thing that you can do, and they can reject it, and all of us as fathers know that often they do. But your main responsibility to your children is to bring them up in the fear and, well, as it says here, the discipline and the instruction of the Lord. But I'd like to say to fathers, we stuffed up. We all do. And if you look back at your life, you think you, you wish you had done something slightly different and your children may have turned out a little bit better. Things might be different. There's actually nothing that we can do about that. It's in the past. But fathers and grandfathers and great-grandfathers, we still have that obligation and we still have that duty. Not just to our kids and our grandkids and in some cases our great-grandkids, but we also have that obligation and duty to our God, to our Heavenly Father, to fulfill this command. And if it's your pride that's in the way or if it's one of your children hurting you that's in the way, dismiss it because the command, our obligation and duty to raise our kids and our grandkids and our great-grandkids in the fear and admonition of the Lord is paramount. We can deal with the broken relationships here, but we do not want a broken relationship there. We want to see our kids there. Fathers, you, know, you have no idea how important you are. God doesn't call himself a parent. He calls himself a father. Fathers, never give up. If you have to, turn over a new leaf. But never give up. I'm going to take this opportunity. Dad... You have given me the best things in my life. I'm not dismissing you, Mum, but it's Father's Day. You've given me your time. You've given me a second-hand car when I was 18. <laughs> but you gave me your care and you gave me your love. Thank you for being there every day 
and I'm sorry for the grey hair. I thank you for your love, and I thank you for your guidance when I've needed it and when I've not wanted it. Most of what you have taught me has stuck. Luckily, some of it didn't. <laughs> but I'm very blessed and lucky to have a dad like you. I love you. Happy Father's Day, then. <laughs>